Hey, welcome to the Four Pillars of Men's Health. So glad you joined me today in this venture about why it is that we are so important to ourselves, to our society, and to God. And I'm just going to get into that, and we're going to have a lot of fun with this. So don't turn the channel. Listen up. Um, a, a great guy once said his name is Roy Benny. Said, "Be the reason someone smiles." And be the reason someone feels loved and believes in the goodness of mankind. That's pretty good. I like that quote. And today we're going to be going through a whole scenario of things. I, I call what I call them is affirmation. It's a list of things that reasons that you are important and why you matter as a person. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I think it is like at the very core of why it is that people want to get healthy and why they stick with it. Because this is not an easy journey. And there's, it's full of all kinds of obstacles and dilemmas and problems. And, uh, and it's not for the faint of heart. It's a hard thing. It's, it's the hardest challenge in my life is staying healthy. And um, I just want you to, uh, I, I want you to get that at, at the very beginning of these sessions is to discover who you are as a person and what makes you tick and why that's so critical to life and to your environment and the people around you and uh, the difference that you can make. And I, I just believe if, if a person really can hone into that, and find out what it is that makes them so important. So many of us, in our the way, the way that we process thoughts, we have these negative thoughts about, I, I you know, I'm no good. I'm can't do this. I can't do that. And I'm not important to anybody. Nobody loves me. I don't know how to figure this stuff out. And if we can get to the nugget of what is so important about you and what makes you so special, I think a lot of these health issues just naturally dissipate. And like emotional eating, for example, if you can figure out what it is about you that makes you important, I think at least it takes the edge off of that emotional eating and you're able to say, you know, I'm not going to eat that because I don't need that to feel good about myself. And same thing with procrastinating for exercise. What, what, you know, you know, three weeks, four weeks, four months from now, what's going to help you get up off the couch and go out and do that run or that type of exercise that you've chosen? What, what's going to what's going to make you get up? You you have to figure that stuff out at the beginning, or you know, journey towards that direction to really get into this and make yourself healthy. So today, that, so that's really what today's about. I, I'm just going to go through a list of things, 10 things that make you unique and important and why it's so critical that you're here and that you're doing your stuff. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. And, I, I, and uh, you might want to just get out a pencil. In fact, get out a pencil and a piece of paper and write these nine or 10 things down, would you? Just write them down. I'll, I'll make sure and give you enough time to write. But go, go grab something. You can even pause this video right now and go grab something to write with and write these things down. And you know what you could do is you could take that list um, tonight or tomorrow or in two days and read through that list and remember what we talked about here in this video. And it's going to help you in ways that you'll be amazed about. So let's just launch right into it. Um, why are you important? And here's, I'm just going to start right off the top with, you're important to God, to God, because he created you in his image. That's what the sacred scriptures teach. And here's, here's what they say. Now, don't click this dial off. We're not going to stay on this stuff too long, but it's important. This is important. Uh, it's the scriptures, the, Satan, the sacred scriptures say this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. 
That's what it says about you. You're creating God's image. And later on it says, what is mine that you are, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. And, you know, I, I just, to me, that's like a big deal. And I, I, I spend a lot of time in my quiet, meditative state times just thinking about those things and and if you can get that connection to uh, napoleon hill calls it infinite intelligence everybody has a different name for it. i call it god or jesus and if you can get toned honed into that and know how important you are to the creator of this universe and the creator of you it's going to go a long ways in helping you find that secret sauce that you have in your life that God has given you to give to everybody around you. So that's, a, that's a, a big one. That was number one. Number two, I matter because I'm the only person that can be me. You know, there's in this world, there's billions of people. There's billions of people. And you know what? You are the only one that is just like you. There's nobody else like you. I've heard doppelgangers. I've never seen that really happen. So I don't think it's true. I think you and me are unique and we each have different experiences. We each have different things that have happened to us and the way we process and the unique gifts and abilities that we have. And if we don't use those and maximize those, uh, people around us are going to be shorted because of that. So keep that in mind. You are the only one who can be you. Now, here's another, there's a third one. I'm important because I have a special purpose. Each one of us, I, I believe, and, you know, at my core, I believe, I have this belief that each one of us has been given a unique mission in life. And, and if we live well, and if we seek our highest calling, I think each one of us can change the world. At least change our world, the people around us. But here's the, here, the flip side to that is, if we are in poor health, and we make poor decisions, and it puts us in a bad place, we can't do it. It's going to have a grave effect on you and the people around you. All right? That was number three. You're important because you have a special purpose. Number four, this is, this is a critical. You're important because you can turn life struggles into life lessons. All right? All right? You know, there's so many. I, I, I remember I sat on this board one time, this nonprofit organization. And I remember the CEO, I remember like most time when I go to board meetings, it's like, yeah, I, don't, I don't really like it and I kind of veer away from it. But th this particular one, the CEO of that, of this company, of this organization was so, he's like a creative genius. And, um, we, you know, we, we, the company was plagued with, the organization was plagued with problems and we we're always dealing with problems. But but he would come to these board meetings, and I, I actually look forward to this, and, and, and I, I kind of knew he'd send out meeting minutes, and we'd know what was coming and, and in our meeting, and he would, he would uh, come in there, and I always look forward to, like, what is this guy, what, what is he going to come up with? What kind of a solution is this guy going to come up with? And it was just amazing to me. I, mean, I always thought, man, I wish I had that kind of creativity. And I, I think I've grown into that a little bit. But, but that's the thing. You know, the saying is, when life hands you a lemon, make lemonade. You know it. And, um, and look for opportunities in your struggles. And you can turn those struggles into life lessons and turn that around and make that into a positive instead of a negative. Here's the next one. I matter because I, am, I can love and be loved. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure you all know this, but love is 
the ultimate experience in life, I, I think. And, and so many of us have been burnt around love. And, and um, But don't give up on it. There's, there's, uh, there's nothing that can replace that in our lives. And whether it's a family member, a spouse, or um, in my opinion, God, knowing that God loves you and cares for you so deeply. And he has the best, a great plan in mind. And that's really the meaning of life. You know, learning how to love our family, learning how to love and receive love from our friends and family, learning how to love and receive love from God. It's an incredible thing. The next one is, um, you're important because you can provide joy and happiness to the people around you. And I think that's, this is so important. That, that we exercise these things and help people feel joyful and help, which helps us feel joyful and happy. You know, it reminds me of a contractor friend of mine. I'm in the construction business in my other life where I make all my money and provide a living for my family. But, but uh, I have this friend, his name is Rob and he's a general contractor and he has, he had an employee that was, went, uh, went off, you know, to build his own house. And he was just going to, he's going to do the whole thing himself, you know, starting with digging out the foundation, pouring the foundation, doing all that stuff. And, uh, and he got into it, you know, super excited, energetic and everything. But um, it wasn't long before he started getting bogged down with, man, this is a big project. And, and, I, and uh, you know, at some point in the project, he took off, you know, for a trip with his family, just get away. And, um, and unbeknownst to him, my friend Rob took his whole crew and went to this guy's house while he was gone. And, and I think he even bought the material. I, he may have had the material sitting there. But Rob and his crew, one day over the weekend, framed in his whole subfloor. And, and got that whole thing completely done so that it was ready for framing. And I'll tell you, when that guy got back and saw what his boss, Rob, had done, it was like a life changer for him. He was just ecstatic. And I think it gave him the energy and the gumption to finish that whole project up just because he knew uh, that Rob cared about him and it gave him such joy and happiness and you could do that too. Let's be like Rob, all right? Let's be like Rob, okay? The next one, you matter because you can show others that anything is possible. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be getting into taking steps and figuring out how to do this in a, in a reasonable manner, get to where you can be healthy and get your mission done in life. But you can't, you can't just like jump into the very end. You gotta start with little steps. And, um, and it's going to be amazing to you when you start taking these little steps, how, you know, just six months ago, something that seemed impossible to you, you're doing it now. It happened to me and it's going to happen to you. All right. So you can show other people that things, that things that seem impossible can be possible because you've taken little steps to get there. So start now. Start now with those little steps. And actually, a little teaser for the next session is going to be on baby steps and how we do that and how we get to the point of um, doing something great. You have to start, it starts with baby steps. The next one is um, you're important because you can influence others to greatness. And, um, and it's so important. It's so the impact that we have on our lives, I, on the people around us. I don't think we really realize the impact and the critical role that we have in people around us and in our, in our society. And it's so important for us to realize that. But when you do cool things, when you start eating right, when you start exercising, when you start thinking right and getting your spiritual life in order, people notice that stuff. And you inspire other people to greatness. I, you know, I, I'm a member of uh, Toastmasters International. And it's an organization to help people improve their leadership and speaking skills. I, I highly recommend it to anybody. But part of Toastmasters is, is uh, you, you, they have this system of working up. And, uh, and um, as you improve in your leadership and, and, leadership and communication skills, you gain more like little badges and things. But the ultimate 
the ultimate big thing in Toastmasters becoming a distinguished Toastmaster. And, uh, you know, sometimes it takes like years and years for people to do this. And some people, you know, most people, I think like 4% of people who join Toastmasters ever get to that level. Well, you know, being the high achiever that I am or the, you know, going the extra mile, not only did I get one distinguished Toastmaster, I got four distinguished Toastmasters. And, uh, you know, my, my wife's always accused me of being all or nothing. I have no idea what she's talking about. But anyway... You know, I can't help but think, because later on, probably while I was going through that journey, it took me probably five years to do that. Uh, during that time, there had been people who were close that I knew to getting their Distinguished Toastmaster. And shortly after I got my toast, Distinguished Toastmaster level, uh, I several, I think there was like five or six or maybe ten people that all of a sudden, it start, just, things just fell into place and they got their Distinguished Toastmaster. I can't help think that I might have had a little impact on that. But you can do that too. You can achieve other people to do great things. And um, so I want you to know that these things, and these are, th these are so important. And again, if you want to write these things out and uh, maybe put this video in slow motion or this audio in slow motion and write those out and repeat these things back to you. I'm, I'm going to do it real quick. Here's the ninth. Th there's nine of them. I'm important to God because he created me in his image. That's number one. Number two, I matter because I'm the only person that can be me. Pretty cool. Number three, I'm important because I have a special purpose. And if you don't do that, uh, I don't want to get sidetracked, but you know, you got to find that special purpose. I'm important. Here's the next one. I'm important to me because I can turn life struggles into life lessons. Very, so important. Next one. I matter because I can love and be loved. What, what would this world be without love? I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how it motivates us, how it gets, gets in us. It's important, the next one, it's important because, I'm important, excuse me, I'm important, you're important because you can provide joy and happiness. Remember my friend Rob, all right? The next one is, um, you matter because you can show others that anything is possible. Uh, the, the great Napoleon Hill, the father of the modern self-improvement movement, he said, what the mind of man can believe and uh, conceive and believe, he can con achieve. Let me get that better here. What the mind of man can conceive and believe, he can achieve. And I, you know, you know I'm sure that has limits to it, but I found, I haven't found limits yet, so... Get into that. The next one, I'm important because I can influence others to do great things in their own life. Write those things down and keep those with you. Pull those out every once in a while and, and just think about those. Process those things. And maybe think of some, some of your own. But, but get into that. Get into this section of it. It's going to make it's going to give you a reason to get up off the couch. It's going to give you a reason to turn away from that big chocolate bar or that big 32 ounce Dr. Pepper or whatever your vice is. It's going to give you, these things are going to give you the reason to say, no, I'm not going to do that because I'm important. 